Hey, what's up, online community? And thanks for stopping by and checking out another segment of Straight No Chaser, where I talk sports and culture for fans, oftentimes with the fans. Now, with the start of college football beginning across the country, I, I know we want to have a little conversation about college football, but this is bigger than me. So I had to get on the phone to call in one of the heavy hitters. So I want to welcome to the show my man. He's a NCAA national title winner, John Unitas award winner, Heisman Trophy finalist, an all-around good guy, my man Tony Rice from the University of Notre Dame. So Tony, thanks for uh, stopping by and checking out another episode of Straight No Chase. So thanks for joining me, man. Oh, uh, Stan, thanks for inviting me. Anything to help you out with your podcast and what you got going on in life, I'll be happy to help out. Man, so before we get into it, <laughs> let's raise our glasses up. You know how we do it at home. If you got it, grab your favorite libation. We're about to get into a straight note chaser. <laughs> Cheers. So, uh, talking about college football, and well, talking about Coach Holtz in college football, um, right now we're, we're starting to move into, um, for lack of a better term, regional college football because, you know, we have COVID-19 going on and we have parts of the country that and conferences that are um, starting to play football, some that are delaying football, things like that. But thinking about Coach Holtz and just college football overall, do you still watch college football? Are you still engaged in the game beyond just Notre Dame? Okay, let's go back now. <laughs> Number one is Notre Dame. I watch it every Saturday. <laughs> I, other, other school just, uh, you know, it was a conversational piece. Just okay. to get together and have a good time. But my heart bleeds blue and gold. And um, I try to watch Notre Dame every Saturday. Even when I'm on the road, I try to make sure that I get back in time to find a television to watch my team. Yeah. And, Notre Dame will always be my team, but and also watch other great games. Some of the kids that um, are some of the people that I played against or people I played with at Notre Dame, their kids are playing ball now at oh, college. Okay. Yeah, so I, I, I tend to watch those guys, um, kids play and root for them because of their mom or dad. So. Okay. so true story, real quick, true story. And we were talking about Notre Dame fans being nationwide. Um, last summer, no, I'm sorry, not last summer, last fall, September, I was at Penny Hardaway's house. Penny Hardaway, the basketball player. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm at Penny's house down in Memphis. Um, I was down there for an event. Um, you know, there's people all over the place. So we're outside in the patio. It was, the, as a matter of fact, it was the Notre Dame-Georgia game. I can tell you what it was. It was that Saturday night game, Notre Dame-Georgia game. We were at Penny Hardaway's house. Uh, we got all these celebrities walking around. You have all these athletes, just regular people. Um, Zach Randolph comes in. Big Zach Randolph played for the Portland Trail Blazers. First thing he says is, man, what, uh, he says something to the effect of, man, where's the TV at? Or you got a TV because the Notre Dame game is about to come on. So, again, this is Notre Dame in Georgia. You know, so we go through the kitchen. We go into Penny's, Penny's uh, family room. And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, life is good because once, you know, I'm down there for an event. And, you know, you have some of guys like me who, who are part of this event. But then I'm looking, and around the television, and this just speaks to the lure and magnitude of Notre Dame football, I've got Mike Miller, former NBA player. I've got Amari Stoudemire, Zach Randolph, Penny Hardaway is in and out. They've got these, these beautiful hostesses that are coming around. They move some of the hostesses and snacks and hors d'oeuvres from the outside to the inside because now people are sitting in the, in the, in the family room, you know, watching uh, the Notre Dame-Georgia game. And I'm like, damn, first of all, I'm like, damn, life is good. Second of all, I'm like, you know, Notre Dame just has that draw. So when you say, that, you know, that, that, that Notre Dame is nationwide and such, it made me think about that experience because, you know, there are people that didn't go to Notre Dame that aren't even from the Midwest, but still have that, that, that uh, passion and support Notre Dame football. So, yeah. yeah, there's something about that blue and gold. Yeah, I think they said the gold helmets just get you real fast, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, my man, you know, like I'm, I'm, but you're right every day. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. So let me ask you: Do you think that college football, you know, because t uh, Coach Holtz was a very tough coach? Um, there were a number of tough coaches throughout history, and there are still some. But do you think the coaching is the the level of toughness is still the same amongst coaches and how they engage? their players and things like that. We, we often hear, oh, the game has gotten soft. You know, what are your thoughts on I, that? I think the game has gotten soft a little bit. I, I, I look at some of, some of the way because, again, I mentioned earlier, you know, when the, when the coaches are tough on you, and you tend to play harder. 
when these people see a player getting grabbed by a face mask by a coach, oh, that poor kid is getting embarrassed on national television. Mm. Hey, he's just trying to prove a point that, yeah, I will embarrass you if you don't follow what I tell you to do. Yeah. So let him go embarrassed. That's the toughness of it. Yes. How you can handle what the coaches say to you. You know, the coach is not going to hit you in the belly or nothing like that, but he's going to grab your face mask and tell you things that is very important because it's not about you anymore. It's the damn team. Yes. And some people just take that as being that poor kid. He's a grown man now. He's over 18. Go out there and play ball. Mommy and daddy is not there to wake you up in the morning and everything. So... Smoking like a true grinded out competitive quarterback <laughs> from the 80s. <laughs> You're right, from the 80s. Oh my God. <laughs> no, no, I'm I get it. my age now. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> my man. So, 